Okay, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a really easy game in Scratch that I call Apple Chaser. Uh, one of the great things about Scratch is how much you can do with very little. Um, that's why I find it a great program for teaching uh, little kids how to program. I, I actually teach Scratch to uh, groups of 8, 9, 10 year olds and show them how to make games, but a lot of times the games um, that they show uh, that are recommended by Scratch are, are just too complicated, so I always try to encourage them to to learn uh, just basic some basic things. So this is this is just a basic game that I came up with. So first thing you're going to want to do is delete the, the cat. Alright, so what we need is first a character I usually make a little square, a little square guy. Uh, he's best for best to be square and not make him rectangular, because when he's turning corners, he'll uh, catch the edge. Uh, I'll show you that later. So yeah, let's give him some eyes, just so he looks kind of interesting. Kids love this part actually. Whenever I'm making making the guy, uh, they get way more into this than the actual scripts, and. Uh, they'll care more about it if you if you give it a funny face so this is gonna be my uh, my little character and there we go okay so let's call him Gary and Gary's a little bit too he's too big so I'm gonna use the shrink sprite to make him a little smaller because the, the smaller he is, the more area we have on the stage to play with. Okay, and so the other sprite we're going to need is an apple. Because this game, after all, is called Apple Chaser. So let's just make a little apple. A little brown stem here. And a leaf. And there we go. There's our apple. It stems a little too long. So here's Gary. Here's our apple. Now Gary, he he's kind of a simple-minded guy. The only thing he wants in life is to get an apple. But unfortunately, he can never get the apple. And that's that's where the game comes in. So we're going to start by giving Gary some scripts here. We're going to start with our green flag forever move 10 steps and he's going to go towards the apple oh we never named our apple apple So Gary's going to go for the apple. Oh, there he goes. And obviously, right now he uh, got the apple, and you can see how happy he is because he managed to get there. But his happiness will not last because we are going to endow the apple with the ability to transport. That's right. We're going to give it a script so that w when uh, we click the green flag, forever oh no, we need actually we need a forever if forever if touching Gary the apple is going to ch go to and now we're gonna set this X and Y to random numbers so that it will just uh, randomly go to different places on our stage. Now uh, random numbers are really great to use in games because uh, they make the game unpredictable and as human beings we like to bring order to disorder so uh, throwing random numbers into your game is always a good idea but uh, we need to know which random X and Y to pick. Of course X and Y, the X is the 
this way and the Y is this way. And we could just look down here and see if I put my mouse all the way over on this side, the furthest I could go is negative 240 uh, on the X and positive 240 on the X. But there's also another trick. If you go into stage here and go into backgrounds and import, they've actually got an XY grid already set up here. And this is this sometimes is a is something you can show if you're teaching this to kids just to give them the idea of what X and Y is. A lot of times they haven't had pre-algebra, so they don't know anything about what X and Y is. So this is good to kind of illustrate it. Sometimes they get it, sometimes they don't. But anyway, from here you can see that the furthest you can go is negative 240 and positive 240, and on Y it's 180 and negative 180. So that's what we're going to put into our Apple scripts. So he's going to go, he's going to pick a random number that is between for x negative 240 and positive 240 and for y it's positive it's a negative 180 and positive 180 All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take that that XY uh, graph off there because it's ugly. So now the the only other thing we need to do here is give uh, make sure the apple won't go off the stage because it'll have a tendency to just get stuck in the wall, and that's not what we want. So we'll put an if edge on bounce, uh, if if on edge bounce, right here, and that'll keep that from happening. So let's see. And he's going to chase that apple forever. But let's make this a little bit more interesting. So right now Gary's going 10 steps. We're going to create a variable called speed. And we're going to tell Gary to go speed steps. Um, when the flag is clicked, we're going to set speed to 1 so that he's moving at least at 1 because if the speed was at 0, he wouldn't be moving at all. And every time Gary reaches the apple, we're going to add one step. So now let's see what happens. So at first he's going really slow. And every time he gets the apple, he's going to go one step faster. He's going to keep going faster and faster. And he's going to max out at about 107. At this point, he's going so fast, he is skipping completely over the apple and never, never actually reaching it. All right, so right at this point, uh, this isn't really a game because the computer's playing for us. So what we need to do is go ahead and um, take this element out right here and create a script that is that does the same thing but allows us to have human control. So this is just a simple script. You probably should learn this one anyway because uh, you can use it in most games you want to grab and there's a lot of ways to do this but this is the way that I normally do it so I grab we need to figure out a way to make it it's so that it responds to your up down left and right keys on your mouse pad so we're gonna grab an if statement we're gonna grab a if key pressed do an up arrow and turn our motion up and now all we need to do is make four of these. So duplicate it once, duplicate it again. Oops. Duplicate it again. This one will be down, down, left, left, 
right. And right. Now we're going to put all of this in a forever loop. And stick it right like that. And now there's only one more thing that I would add to this game to make it interesting, and that's if Gary touches the wall, the game is over. So that's where the challenge comes, is that the game, Gary gets faster and faster, and you have to control him, but you got to keep him from crashing into the walls. So we're going to do, when the flag is clicked, forever if sensing touching edge control stop all so now let's see let's see our game so now I'm controlling Gary I usually can get to about 11 Doing good. Okay. Oh, and I crashed into the wall, and now I can't move. So, your uh, my score would be 18 because we start with one. So that's that's the basics of Apple Chaser, and you can teach a kid how to make this game really without much difficulty. The only difficulty I think would be is in explaining the speed variable but it's not a hard variable and uh, the variables are really come in handy with with scratch so this is a good way to learn variables and uh, and also random numbers with the XY thing um, that tends to confuse them but again you need to learn X and Y when you're learning scratch or, or forever and the other thing about this game is it's so simple there's other things we could add uh, for instance, I kind of like to to make it so that Gary starts the game in the middle of the screen. So we add a, a go a, a one where he starts at zero zero, so that he's going to start in the middle of the screen instead of because right now if I started the game, he would already be embedded in the wall. Let's see if I start. Oh no, let's get rid of this. So if he's up here, let's say this game just ended hit the green flag and he's already stuck so I would have to bring him down here with my mouse which kind of takes the, the fun out of the game like I, I think it's better to have something in game to do that although that's another concept that's usually hard to explain to kids most of the time kids just want to grab this and spin it around and go woo and they don't really care about the scripts but we are trying to teach programming here so Go ahead and uh, I would go ahead and add a script that starts Gary here in the middle of the screen. And another thing you can do is instead of having the speed variable up here, we can make a new variable and call it score. Get rid of uh, don't display the speed. So we just have score. And then every time Gary reaches the apple, you get one point. And whenever the game starts, we'll start and score at zero. So that we have the actual score instead of having to, to, to uh, remember to take one away to know exactly how, how well we did. And there's all kinds of improvements. I've actually had kids make um game over screens and opening screens but this is a really simple game to start with that you can add a lot of things to and uh you know an eight-year-old nine-year-old kid can actually program this and get it working in an hour oh so there you go there's apple chaser thanks for watching